Ah, Jet Moto. That one racing game on the original Sony PlayStation. Developed in 1996 by Single Track, the developers of the first two Twisted Metal games, and published by Sony. Later, a port of it even came out for the PC. When I first saw this game, I was excited. I had a PlayStation, not a Nintendo 64, but everywhere I looked there were commercials and in-store demos of Wave Race 64, and I thought that game looked fantastic. I really wanted something similar for the PlayStation. When I saw Jet Moto, and I saw those jet ski hover racing things skimming along the water, I thought, here it is, Wave Race for the PlayStation. And I picked it up as soon as I could. Once I started playing, I quickly realized it was something different. Zooming across the water is only part of the game, and is really something you want to avoid as it slows you down. So, in Jet Moto, you have to pick which team you want to race for. Each team has its own colors and personalities, and of course different team members to choose from. Which team member you choose affects the various stats of your racer, like acceleration and maneuverability. One of the things that makes Jet Moto different from many other racing games is being competitive on any given track isn't just about steering and maneuvering carefully. It's more about finding the little tricks and shortcuts of each map. These tricks and shortcuts don't simply give you a little boost or advantage, they're required to do well in the race. In fact, if you don't use these shortcuts, your racer feels so out of place and underpowered compared to the other racers, you would almost expect this to be a game of upgrades, where you can upgrade your vehicle over time to increase its performance but it's not that kind of game. There isn't an upgrade system. The only upgrading or unlocking that really occurs is the ability to unlock new tracks as you play. One of the main mechanics of the game is the magnetic grapple. When you approach certain glowing poles, you can engage your magnetic grapple, which magnetically connects you to the pole. The idea is you're supposed to be able to use the poles to swing around tight turns without slowing down. In practice, these poles don't work very well. If you're not careful, they often will slow you down more than simply ignoring them. I found the best strategy is to swing around the pole in a tight arc, then use a boost to recover your speed. This seems to be a good way to deal with them and can even help you gain places over the other racers. Overall, the game is really difficult. Someone could take the time to find all the little tricks and shortcuts needed to get ahead in each race, but I don't really have the time for that or, frankly, the interest. As much as I wanted a Wave Race 64 game for the PlayStation, this wasn't it. After giving it some very good attempts, it went into my stack of games, where it just collected dust, and I turned to playing other games that were more fun and more rewarding of my time. By the way, there's a secret code you can enter in Twisted Metal 2, which allows you to race around one of the Jet Moto courses. If you dig around enough online, I'm sure you can find it. So that's Jet Moto. Have you ever played this one before? And if so, what did you think? Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, following, upvoting, hugs, uh, nice words sharing of candy and pizza are all wonderful things to do on whatever platform you're watching this on. And tune in again next time for more retro fun.